guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day in my kitchen. Are you ready? This is like street food in Sicily or uh, in Puglia, certainly southern Italy. Um, they love fried foods, like fried treats, almost like a fried dough. In this case, we're going to make a fritter. And how can you make a fritter better? Like if you think about it, like how could I make a fritter better? Well, one, I would want to add something inside, like a surprise. One of my favorite little treats, fruits, to add in any type of baking is an apricot. Oh, love it. And then I was thinking, what is something else that I love that I could add to the inside of the fritter that would even take taste more delicious? Hmm, let me think, let me think. Custard, because I love custard. So I didn't come up with this recipe. So today in Italiano, we're going to make albacoche fritta, which is apricot fritters with custard. Whew. Okay, so we've got a lot of ingredients here, a lot of things moving on, but it's actually relatively easy. I know you're as excited about it as I am. Let's go over ingredients. First and foremost, we've got to make that custard. So what I've got here is about two and a half cups of whole milk. Next, what I've got is two-thirds of a cup of flour. Now, you want to use like a pastry flour, something with a low content. So an all-purpose will work great. Pastry flour is my favorite, or like a cake flour. It's finer and it's got a very low protein content. Here I've got three quarters of a cup of sugar. Here I've got a teaspoon and a half, so a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Oh, smells great. You know, you, you taste it like that, it's absolutely terrible, but you add it with sugar and egg yolks, and all of a sudden it's absolutely delicious. I can't quite explain it. I've got here four tablespoons of butter. Next, my secret powerful ingredient is a nutmeg, which you can see I've been using it. Oh, nothing better than fresh ground nutmeg. So an eighth of a teaspoon of fresh ground. I've got here five eggs, whole eggs, free range if you can get them. We're going to want the egg yolks of these, and I'll show you, but we're going to want essentially five egg yolks. So that's going to be our custard. Uh, mentally put a block in there. I'm going to go over all the ingredients. Now what I've got is I've got the ingredients to make the batter and the inside, okay? So here I've got 10 dried apricots. You can use whole apricots, or if you can use a whole apricot, obviously it's bigger, so then you would use five whole apricots and you'd cut them in half, okay? But here I've got 10 dried whole apricots, all of equal size. Here I've got one cup of whole flour. Here I've got a half of a cup of whole milk. You're gonna need four tablespoons of butter a heaping teaspoon of sugar. I've got here one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, because that's going to add our leavening. That's going to add a lot of lift to it. We also want to add some more lift to it, and I'll tell you, a great flavor to add. I'm going to add some brandy. A brandy's got that, it's almost got like a wine backdrop to it. Oh, brandy's going to be great. So it's going to add a little bit of flavor, but what's key, there's really no alcohol in this at all. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but when you put the alcohol in the hot oil, it's going to bubble. So all the alcohol is going to go. However, that bubbling is going to increase surface area. And as a result, it's going to give you more crunch, more depth to, to crunch. I'm going to need two more eggs, again, for the batter. And I'm going to need here about a half of a cup of powdered sugar. I'm going to need some salt. Now, I use either pink Himalayan or French sea salt. Today, pink is sexy, guys. Last but not least, I'm going to need some olive oil. Now, I don't want extra virgin olive oil in this because it's going to be too flavorful. I really want what we're going to call the last pressing of olive oil. So it's going to be gold and yellow. But if I did want some phenomenal extra virgin olive oil that was peppery, earthy, grassy, and just delicious, where would I go? Where would I get it? Oh, I know. I'd go to Puglia, Italy, and there's this guy out there who owns a farm, Joe Borio, along with his two boys, Vito and Joe, and they actually co-op with a whole group of farms to bring in some of the best olive oil you're ever going to have, Vito and Joe's. And it comes right from Puglia, Italy, just above the heel. And I'll tell you, if you hit that link above or below, if you go to my website, Cooking Italian with Joe, or our Facebook page, and just click buy it now. We'll actually drop ship you a bottle of our olive oil right to your front doorstep. I like to, I think of it as like a trip to Italy. It's like a trip to going to Italy right in a bottle. Guys, first, let's get going on our custard. So I want a saucepan medium size on the oven. So I've got my two and a half cups of whole milk in my pan. I want this on a really, really low heat. I'm going to add my vanilla. I'm going to add a teeny pinch of pink Himalayan sea salt. And I'm going to add about half of my sugar. 
Doesn't have to be exact, guys. We're just splitting the sugar up. And now give that a nice stir. We're gonna let that come up to temp really slow on our stovetop. While the milk is heating up, guys, I took my five eggs and got five egg yolks. I'm gonna take the remaining part of the sugar from the custard ingredients. Now I'm gonna take my nutmeg and I'm just gonna go eh, like an eighth of a teaspoon, not even. Guys, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cream the eggs. So I'm gonna mix for about three to four minutes the egg yolks and the sugar and the nutmeg. We're going for like a yellowy, frothy, delicious texture. Good news on my egg yolks and sugar. So this is done, so I'm gonna lower this down. Guys, I'm gonna cook the milk until I get a light boil. So it just started to give me a nice good bubble. I'm gonna shut the heat off, set it to the side. Now I've gotta make that roux mixture to thicken the custard. So I've got here my flour, I've got my butter that I melted. Now I've got about two tablespoons of sugar from the custard ingredients. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stir this. Now this is basically my roux mixture. So use your fork and give it a good stir. And it's gonna get kind of a paste and then it's gonna turn into a nice little crumble. Now I'm gonna take my whisk from my milk. I'm gonna put it in here. And then I'm gonna take the hot milk and I'm gonna slowly ladle it in my roux mixture here, just nice and slow. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna start to dissolve the roux. Our goal here is to make something very smooth and silky with no lumps. Guys, it's been just over a couple of minutes. My roux mixture with flour and the cream, the vanilla, the sugar, that's all set. Now guys, I'm gonna take the flour custard mixture and I need to add it to the egg yolks. But the concern here is I need to temper the eggs because if I add something really hot or add the egg yolks directly to the hot mixture it'll start to curdle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit of the custard mixture at a time and I'm going to add it to the egg yolks to bring them up to temperature. And as soon as I bring a little bit maybe about half of the amount of custard mixture to the egg yolk mixture, the egg yolks will be up to temp, I can add them back to the custard mixture, and then we can put everything back on the stove. So what I'm gonna do now is just add a little bit, a ladle at a time, not even, of the hot milk mixture and just slowly whisk it into the egg yolks. Once we're at about half of the milk mixture into the egg yolks, eggs are tempered, and then I can add the egg yolks back into the custard mixture. So now I'm gonna add the tempered eggs with the milk. Now I've got all the contents of my cream, egg, flour, butter, all the contents are back in my saucepan and now I'm gonna bring the heat up to a low medium and I'm gonna stir. The goal here is to bring this up to a light boil and we wanna hold it for about six minutes. Let me tell you why, two reasons. One, we wanna cook out the flour. We wanna cook out that flavor and add that nutty, creamy flavor of the flour. Number two, I'm gonna to need to heat this up to a boil and sustain it for a couple of minutes to activate the thickening of the roux. And it's already starting to happen now, I can feel it. So I'm gonna give it a nice stir. We don't wanna create any lumps. And I'm gonna stir this for a good, say six minutes or so. Guys, what you're seeing here is a perfect thickening. That's exactly what I want. Guys, it's been a couple of minutes here, so I want the custard to cool and I actually wanna chill it. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna throw it right in the refrigerator. I'm gonna put a piece of plastic over the top so it doesn't develop a skin, and I'm gonna leave it in there for about an hour, hour and a half. Guys, now it's time to make our batter, which we're gonna dip this delicious apricot custard in. So I just got a large bowl. I'm gonna add my flour, baking soda, baking powder, sugar, and a pinch of pink Himalayan, and then I'm gonna stir this up. Now I wanna take that butter, I wanna melt it. While my butter's melting, I'm gonna take my half cup of milk, and I want to separate my eggs from yolks because I'm going to use that as an another leavening agent. So in the middle, I've got my egg yolks in there with the milk. I'm going to give that a good stir. And now I'm going to add my melted butter as I'm stirring it. A nice mix with my fork. And then last but not least, I'm going to add my brandy. And that'll loosen you up just a bit. That's the batter. That's exactly the consistency of the batter I want. Now I want to let this set for a good 15 minutes because I want everything to hydrate. I want that flour to hydrate. Now I've got my two egg whites here and I'm always gonna use a hand mixer because it's such a small amount, it's easier to whip. This will just take about three to four minutes. Three minutes in, I got beautiful egg whites. I wanna add that to my batter. So take all of your egg whites and then what I do is you're just gonna fold it in. See how it's already getting bubbly right there? Isn't that awesome? Guys, it's been about 20 minutes. Now I've got my custard 
coming out of the freezer, and it's not frozen, but see how thick it is? That's what I want. I want it really thick, like really gelatinous, because i got to be able to hold a shape over the apricot. So I've got my dread station here. I've got my custard. I've got my apricots. I've got my batter. A couple of tips here. I've got my rack. Whether If you don't have a rack, uh, you're going to use a platter with some paper towels, powdered sugar, obviously Vito and Joe's olive oil, just for a plug. Right, And then what I always recommend you guys do is, I like a cast iron pan or pot with the white enamel inside. That way it gives me a contrast. And we're going to get that oil up to around 350, 375, which will be perfect. A couple other really important tips to make these fritters, these apricot fritters, mwah, come out absolutely delizioso is you got to hit that red subscribe button. When you hit that, what it does is uh, any new recipes, any new trips, blogging with Boreo, comes right to your notification box. And I'll tell you, as I say every week, it really means a lot to me when you subscribe to our channel and hey, makes you part of the family. Apricot. So I'm going to take a chunk of this, not a ton, and I'm going to put it around my apricot. So what I like to do to keep everything the same, I make a bunch of these first. So I'm going to go ahead and make 10 of these first, and then I'm just going to put it on a plate. Guys, I've got my 10 meatballs of apricots wrapped in custard. That alone is delicious. Then I'm going to take each one, and you're just going to get messy, guys. You just get messy with it. So I'm going to take my batter, and I'm just going to, with my hand, see how nice and fluffy it is? Okay? And then put it in the oil. And guys, what you want to do here is you want to keep an eye on them. So turn them quick. you got a lot going on in there. So just take your time. Be gentle. Guys, there's one right there. How beautiful does that look? All right, I'm going to set that right here on my rack. Now what I'm going to do is take my powdered sugar, and I want to be generous. I get them flipped. I hit them one more time. And now while they're still warm, I'm going to get them on a plate, and then I'm going to hit it one more time with my powdered sugar. First off, the aroma in here. It, you know when you walk down those carnival lanes and you can smell the, the oil and the sugar and the, and the flavors and the spices? Like that's what we got right going on. So the key here is to find the perfect one. So I think I got it right here. So I want to pull one of these out. You see how you got that crunchy top? If you guys can hear that, you got a little bit of a crunch going. And normally you just grab it with your mouth and bite into it. So I just want to show you what's going on in here. So you got the apricot, which is just gooey and warm. You got the custard, and then you got that nice crisp outside. Okay, guys, it's Sicily walking the streets, small glass of Prosecco, and somebody says, oh, do you want an apricot fritter? Don't mind if I do. Mmm, you smell the sugar, and you smell the vanilla and the custard, the egg, the apricot. Mmm, crunch is great. And you got your sugar on the outside, so immediately it's sweet. This one of those treats that just gets better the more you chew it. So you got the sweetness and the texture of that shell of the batter, which is just perfect. And then you get right into that custard, which is warm. And that's sweet and vanilla and eggy. Got a little hint, barely, but that nutmeg coming through. And then you go right in the apricot, which is which again is the orangey, sweet, tangy, tropical. Oh, it's so good. Hey guys, thanks for taking a trip to Sicily with me today on the streets of the carnival for just another absolutely delicious recipe and a, and a fun treat and something you can certainly share with your family for a lifetime. Now remember, real important, hit that red button, that subscribe button. Hey, make you part of the family. Hit the link above or below. Hit our website, hit our Facebook page. Order yourself a bottle of Vito and Joe's extra virgin olive oil right from Italy. And remember, my, my most important tip, and I hope you really take that away from our videos, is, is once a week, a couple times a month, you know, shut off the TV and the computer and the cell phone for sure, and you know, get around the table, celebrate your heritage, and set some traditions with your family that'll last your lifetime. I know they did for me. Hey guys, from my kitchen to yours, until next week, mwah, won't have to be so.